welcome in. It's the Hurry Up for Divisional Playoff Weekend, the best weekend in American professional sports. And here to get you guys ready, got two regulars coming back. On your right, we got former Patriots quarterback Matt Castle. He's on NBC Sports Boston. On your left, we got former first round pick, former Ohio State and Cowboys linebacker Bobby Carpenter. See that, Bobby? I mentioned your alma mater and not Matt's. Um, Boom. Yeah. So, what do you mean? We're turning he, it around here. <laughs> you can uh i well i think you guys are in good shape now after after a little hiatus there i think you guys are actually in decent shape matt um uh, all right so and you can also catch bobby on outkick on 97 one the fan in columbus and guys i'm excited to have you in because we got a lot to get to this week and and i think that the, the first topic for this week is one that is i think going to affect teams across the league for over the next few years and and that's you know when we dive into this bills chiefs game and where Patrick Mahomes is and where Josh Allen is and what it means for the rest of the NFL and what this individual matchup is going to look like on, on, on Sunday night, the capper for the weekend. Um, you know, Matt, I'm going to start with you. You know, when, when, you, when you look at the way Josh Allen's played over the course of this year, and it was a little up and down, and then the way he came on at the end and what he did against the Buccaneers and what he did in winning four games at the end of the year, and now, of course, what he did in New England um, or against New England on Saturday night, do you think Josh Allen's now on the level that Patrick Mahomes has been on the last couple of years? And should we regard him that way? You know, I, I think you have to at this point. The, the performance that he put together last year throughout the course of the season, he was an MVP caliber quarterback last year. This year, yes, he's had a little bit of ups and downs, the ebbs and flows of the season, but you see how he can take over the game. He's so dynamic. He can do it with his arm. He can do it with his legs. I mean, last week's performance, just watching it, was one of the best performances of any quarterback in the postseason I've ever watched. And he wasn't doing it by, like, the catch and run plays, the screens, and this, that, and the other. It was bombs away down the field, the accuracy in which he played. He just took over the game. And so – he has to be considered one of the top five quarterbacks in the league just because of his skill set. And when he can play the way that he has and the consistency in which he's had over the last two seasons, you got to put him in that category, in my opinion. Bobby, do you think he's leveled up to that cat? Do, do, like, do you think he's leveled up to that level? You know, and, and when you look at like what he's, I mean, been able to accomplish now in four years in Buffalo, and I think it's been a little slower to come on than pa Patrick Mahomes was in Kansas city. He of course won the MVP his first year as a starter. I, like, do you regard Allen as that level of quarterback now? Well, I think a little bit of, you know, with Mahomes, I mean, he had a pretty, a more advantageous offensive system. It was a little bit easier what they were asking him to do. And he had tremendous skill players around him. You have to remember, you know, he slid into a playoff team, Bert. It wasn't like, you know, the Bills who drafted Josh Allen who were kind of building this thing around him. And so when Josh Allen came in the league, I wasn't incredibly high on him as a quarterback. He was a big guy. He was athletic and he could throw the ball really hard. You know, those are great traits, but I would much rather have, you know, anticipation, accuracy, and pocket presence. And those are much more, much more difficult to develop, especially with a guy who's in the NFL. And I thought over the last handful of years, he's done a really nice job of scrambling to buy time, playing from the pocket when it, when it shows, and not just trying to chuck the ball down the field, not just pulling it down and running, but you see the rhythm throws, being able to get through some of his progressions. And then he's always had that athleticism and the ability to push the ball down the field. So when you put all that together, you know, and aggregate it, you have a quarterback now who you know, really doesn't have many weaknesses. And it's tough as a defense looking at him. It's like, well, how do you play him? Because you're going to have to make sure you try to keep him in the pocket. You have to be aware of the quarterback run game. And if you can throw with timing, and now you have, you're forced to cover guys tight underneath and not just think he's a guy that's going to chuck it down the field. And after he gets locked on his first read, he never comes off of it. You know, you have to cover the whole field and not just one side and not just covering the deep ball. So with what he's been able to do, I think he's in that class now. You start looking at him and, yeah, he might not have the quick release and quite the readability that, you know, Aaron Rodgers does. And, you know, there's some things that Russell Wilson does a little bit better than him. And obviously – I don't know if anyone plays from the pocket as well as Tom. You know, Pat Mahomes kind of does everything really well. But Josh Josh Allen does it his own way, and he's a big physical guy. He's he's a little bit of Cam Newton-esque, you know, with his size and ability to run people over and buy time. But, you know, he, he's much better from the pocket than we've seen, you know, over Cam Newton's career at this point in time. 
Hey, Matt, and you know what? Bobby hit on something interesting there to me is like the development we've seen from Josh Allen, right? And and the things Bobby you know touched on there, anticipation, accuracy. Like, I think a lot of us have been led to believe that like when you get to the NFL, those are sort of things that you have or you don't. And so like just for you from a quarterback's perspective, how impressive is it that he's been able to improve in those areas? It's unbelievable. The, I mean, the leaps and bounds he's improved from one year to the next. I mean, it was on full display just the other night when McCourty, who he knew was a good free safety, right? He knew that he couldn't stare down a receiver to throw a deep ball, but he was looking off one way, look back the other, just to throw the go route down the field. I mean, those are things that he has developed. He's worked hard out in the off season. His deep ball accuracy was another thing that he struggled with early on in his career. And part of it also is the development of this team, the weapons around him was Stefan Diggs, Cole Beasley, Gabriel Davis, Isaiah McKenzie showed up this last week. And, and this team puts a lot on him, but he has worked tremendously hard at it and he's continued to grow as a pocket passer. And that's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And a lot of it comes down to trust, trust in your offensive coordinator, understanding the scheme, the repetition, the time on task that you have with the same characters and with the same people, the offensive line and understanding what's being asked from you from each individual play and also taking the profit when they give you when they give you the opportunity to because sometimes you know as a young quarterback you're trying to make the big play trying to force the ball down the field especially when you're not a good football team but you can tell he started to develop to develop that patience that you see in these elite quarterbacks hey it's not open down the field okay I'll check the ball down I'll take my plus five yards get ourselves into favorable favorable odds in distance in terms of third down second down and just continue to move the chain so that's what's important me most about Josh Allen's development from where he was as a rookie to the second year to how he played last year and into this year. And Matt, One you thing. mentioned it, right? Matt, Matt mentioned it like Isaiah McKenzie, Stefan Diggs, Cole Beasley, Gabriel Davis, Dawson Knox, Devin Singletary. Like Bobby, you, like your point like that you made there a second ago was how good Patrick Mahomes situation was. And when he came into the league, obviously he had Andy Reid and Tyree Kill and Sammy Watkins and Travis Kelsey. Do you think now is at the point where, like, what what's around uh, Josh Allen? Is it the level that that, that what of, of what Patrick Mahomes has, and and he's ready to go in? And I know they won an Arrowhead earlier in the year, but he's ready to go in in a, a do or die playoff setting and be able to beat Patrick Mahomes. Do you think he's got enough around him to do that? Well, I think you look at Stephon Diggs, and he he's one of the elite receivers in the NFL. And, you know, they can get Cole Beasley going underneath. When they get the running game goal with Singletary, that's a big piece of it. And then Josh Allen's able to use his legs as well. So I don't know if, like, you go weapon for weapon, you know, is it going to be better or worse? But I think when you look at it holistically, what they're trying to do, you know, he does a really good job of it. And just the you know, one quick anecdote is, you know, you look at this, and, and Matt may remember it. Heck, Albert, you might remember it as well. I think it was Josh Allen's rookie season, maybe his second year. They're playing – New England on like a Monday or Sunday night. It's a prime time game, you know, first half of the season. End of the end of the game, the Bills have a chance to put together a drive and to go, I think maybe tie it, potentially win the game. The sa Patriots are showing split safety look, cover two, it looks like two man. You know, and he's a young quarterback and New England disguises things as well as anybody. He drops back. They're running three verticals. He thinks he can get the bender inside of cover two and split the safeties right in the middle of the field. I watched Devin McCourty take three steps off the hash like he's going wide. They run Robert. He runs right across that thing, picks it off. They're spinning the other <laughs> safety top. And, like, I look at that and, I'm like, this guy, he's never going to get it. I think it was his second year. Like, he's, he's never going to figure it out. Like, you need to be able to see that. And the linebacker led him inside for a reason. And you look at him now and you watch him, and he doesn't make those mistakes anymore. And against Bill Belichick, one of the guys who's scheming it up as well as anybody in disguising things as well as anybody. So you give him the weapons, guys that can go make a contested ball catch. Like I think Stefan Diggs, like he doesn't get near as much credit as he probably deserves for being, you know, an elite wideout because he wasn't drafted in the first round and he didn't come from, you know, Alabama or Ohio State or USC or all these big programs. You know, he came from Maryland, where he's from. And so you see what he can do and you Part, you partner that with what Josh Allen's able to do and read the field now. And that's what makes this offense so scary. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's going to be fascinating to see sort of how fast paced this game is through the first quarter, because 
you know, we know what the, both teams can do on the offensive side of the ball. I, I want to kind of put a put a put a bow on this conversation by like looking at maybe what this is going to do to the rest of the league too. And I've always been of the I've been in the opinion of the last year or so that what the Rams did in flipping out Jared Goff to go get Matt Stafford, what the Niners did in moving off of Jimmy Garoppolo. Now he's they're still alive, and we're going to get to them in a second. Jimmy Garoppolo is still a quarterback, but you know they made an effort to trade up and to 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 level up at the position. What sort of impact this is going to have on the rest of the league? And if having a good quarterback is no longer good enough, because I think that that's what the Rams and the Niners sort of acknowledged last year. And if you're in the AFC right now, you're looking at it for the next 10 years, guys. And it's Mahomes in Kansas City, Allen in Buffalo, Herbert in L.A., Lamar Jackson in Baltimore, Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. Like, Matt, do you think that this is going to have an effect on the way teams build going forward where there are certain teams that are going to look at it and say, we're happy with our quarterback. There's Nothing like really wrong with him, but we just need to be better at the position. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You have to take that into account because this is a quarterback driven league and you see the elite quarterbacks usually are on the elite teams. Why? Because they're the leader of the team and they can take them to the next level. And so while there's efficient quarterbacks, there are very effective quarterbacks. Everybody's always going to be on the search for the next Josh Allen, for the next Patrick Mahomes, because these are generational players. Now, they're not easy to find. Right. And you just mentioned a handful of guys that are unbelievable at their craft. They have incredible skill sets and you have to be ready to build around that guy. But at the same time, if you can go out and get a guy and develop them like Josh Allen's a great example of going out and saying, Hey, look, we're going to take on a chance on this guy that has just raw potential. But if it hit that raw potential becomes a reality, man, we're going to be in a good position for a long, long time. And that's what the bills have done. Right. And so I think every team in the NFL has to continue to evaluate that position and look for that guy. And if they can do it or bring in a guy that they can develop like that, they'll, they'll take a chance because again, that'll put them in a position to win year in, year out for years to come. Rams bucks. And this one is interesting because you got the defending world champs on one side and you've got another one of these teams that's all in on the other side in the Rams. And Matt, I'm going to start with you on the Bucks. You know, just looking at where they're at and, and if you really kind of drill down on the details of, of where they've been in the season they've gone through, you start to look at it. They had two starting offensive linemen get hurt last week. Looks like both those guys are going to play, but we'll see what sort of form Tristan Wirfs, their first team all pro tackle, is in. Antonio Brown's gone. Chris Godwin's gone for the year. Like, how differently do you look at the Bucks going into this this year's playoffs versus where they were last year? Well, they're obviously not as, as explosive of a group because with Chris Godwin out, Antonio Brown out, I mean, it, it's definitely a different group in terms of their skill players. They can concentrate more on the Mike Evans of the world, the Gronk. Guys like Scotty Miller has to step up. Leonard Fournette's been out too. He's questionable, might come back this week, which would be a huge boost, not only in the run game, but also in the pass game. But again, the issues that right now you're looking at that are the glaring issues is this offensive line because you know that the Rams, the strength of that defense is Aaron Donald. And then you've got Leonard Floyd, you've got Vaughn Miller, and they line up all over and they're going to pick their weaknesses and they're going to attack it. And then if if Worfs can't, can't go, I mean, then the question is how much help do you have to get over? over on the right side of the line and does that take you out of certain plays and how you want to run your offense is it going to be chip help is it going to be tight end presence all those different things are going to play a role in this game because in the first game that they played the rams were able to pressure tom brady 16 times they know where he's going to be in the pocket they need to give him a stable pocket in order for him to go through his progressions get the ball out and make it deliver the ball accurately and that's the one thing that you can do against tom brady is you can unsettle him because again that's where the pass rush is going to be become an issue and those injuries on that offensive line so it's going to be really interesting to watch this game and see how those guys are from a health standpoint and how they can hold up against this dominant pass rush for the LA Rams. Now, Bobby, you played against Tom. I mean, hell, your your dad probably played against Tom. Um, <laughs> but like, you look at like when you look at what like what what you guys would do to game plan against Tom Brady and what it takes to beat Tom Brady. Do you see the Rams defense having what it takes in this one? Well, well I think you look at. The, the prism of history, you know, recently, not young Tom Brady, but probably more over the last 10 years, maybe even 12 years. And when he's had a lot of weapons, he's been great. When he doesn't have weapons, he's been great. But the difference is if you can get pressure on him with four guys, and any quarterback will tell you this, if you bring pressure and you bring, you know, blitzers, second and third level guys, 
It's simply a matter of the quarterback being able to identify where the voided zones are, where the favorable matchup is, and getting the ball out. The problem is, like you saw with the Giants, they did it a couple of times against Tom. I mean, he's had these problems before. You, the Saints were really able to do it, where if you bring four, possibly five guys, there's not always an immediate answer. And, and Tom's not someone that's going to pull that ball down. We joke when he goes and picks up yardage, you know, on a you know third and eight, and he'll get a first down or third and five, and it takes him an hour to get there. But, you know, Aaron Donald and Von Miller are two of the best individual pass rushers in NFL history. You look at what these guys have done over their careers, and you throw Floyd, they bring some other guys in there. If they can get pressure with just their front four, it allows you to do a lot in the back end. There's not the immediate answer. They, you know, they don't have Godwin. There's no Antonio Brown. You can double Mike Evans. And in doing that, Tom doesn't have that quick answer. So they better be able to run the football because if they can't, that offensive line is going to be hanging out to dry, especially if Wirfs isn't healthy enough to go. Hey, hey, Matt, this is your buddy, Tom, over here. Is, he, is this going to be his last no. game? If, he, if, if they can't pull it out, is this his last game? I don't know. He always said he wanted to play until he's 45, guys, and he's held true to that so far. So, I mean, I can't see this being his last game, I mean, because I think he's got one more in him. He loves the game. He's going to keep doing it. Then again, Giselle could get get in that ear. And you know how influential women can be. So that there's <laughs> there's definitely that possibility. There's no there's no doubt about it. Yeah, there's only there's only one thing that's undefeated. Let's we'll we'll, we'll wrap up this this uh, the, the 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 Rams Bucks game with just I think a look at the the, the visiting team here and I, like. I don't know, Bobby, about you, but I, I just feel like on that Monday night, they uh, they found like a different gear. And it looked like Cam Akers had sort of added something to them offensively. So I do you think that maybe this is a little bit of a different Rams team than what we saw in November or October or September? Maybe we saw Sean McVay's vision for Matt Stafford come together and being able to play him off of a power running game like we saw on Monday night. I mean, that's, that's the version of the West coast, you know, that those guys run where they want to run it, stretch, you know, inside, outside zone, get the play action off of it. And what's really remarkable is for something that Baker Mayfield struggled to develop with Odell Beckham jr. That chemistry that you see where they couldn't seem to get on the same page, Matt Stafford and him have seemed to develop it here rather quickly. And so that gives them a viable deep threat that allowed them to use Cooper cup as the ultimate decoy last game. I'm sure they'll get him more involved this week, but you know, with Matt Stafford, a lot of people discount, you know, in the media how good he is. Players know how good he is and how good he has been for a long time. So you saw a glimpse of what he can be. Uh, it wouldn't stun me. Honestly, I think there's a great chance. And if I really was pressed to it, I'd take the Rams to win this game because of how well I think they're playing on offense and what they can do defensively.